Good morning, Year 4. Welcome to your English lesson for Monday the 1st of March. I hope you had a lovely weekend. You got some fresh air, you got some relaxation in, and that you are feeling really excited about the very last week of home learning. Hooray! You can do it. So the first thing I'd like you to do, please, like always, is in your neatest joined up handwriting, write the long date and the walt and underline it with a ruler. Then you need to have a think about what information you are going to include in your writing today and how you are going to structure it. So today we are imitating a non-chronological report. What does the word imitate mean? It means to copy, doesn't it? So we are going to be copying our original report that we've been looking at. But you're not going to be copying it word for word. You're going to be putting it into your own words and you're going to be adding the extra research that you found out during the, your lesson on Friday with Mrs. Plews. We're going to start with a warm up though. And our warm up is based on the spag work we did last week on possessive apostrophes. Let's see how much you can remember. Can you help me please to add a possessive apostrophe to each of these sentences? If you are at home, you might like to pause the video um, for each sentence and chat with anyone who you've got available. And if you're at school with Mrs Chamberlain, you might have a, like to have a chat uh, within the classroom about where you think the apostrophe goes. Misha's bag is in the classroom. Where do we put the apostrophe in that sentence? Look at the next one. That's Frankie's ball, cried George. And the last one is, where is Miss Fowler's pen? Try to work out, please, where the apostrophes go. Pause the video if you need to. OK, let's have a look. The bag belongs to Misha, so the apostrophe must go in the word Misha's. It goes between the A and the S. That's Frankie's ball. The ball belongs to Frankie, so the apostrophe goes in the word Frankie's. It goes between the E and the S. Uh, and where is Miss Fowler's pen? Well, the pen belongs to Miss Fowler, so the apostrophe will go in the word Fowler's and it will go between the R and the S. The only thing I want you to bring to, bring to your attention is this sentence here. It's already got an apostrophe in it, hasn't it? Is that OK? What's that apostrophe there for? Have a chat with someone if you've got them available. It's actually an apostrophe for contraction, isn't it? It's where we miss a letter out. You might remember that we talked about that in our lesson last Wednesday. Uh, what letters have we missed out in this word here then? That's. That is short for that is. So the apostrophe shows that the letter I is missing. We will often have sentences that have more than one apostrophe in them and that's okay. So I spoke to Mrs Plews um, after your uh, lesson on Friday and she was really really impressed with your fact finding. She said you did a really good job of your research and in adding facts to the ones that you already had from the original report so well done and thank you for sharing that with her. Um, are you satisfied with the information you collected? I hope you are. Do you feel like you've got enough to write your report today? Uh, our writing target hasn't changed. It is still to use paragraphs to organise ideas around a theme and you will be doing exactly that when you write your report today. Oops, I should have covered that up. Um, <laughs> today you are going to become the author of the original non-chronological -chronolog report. So you're going to put it into your own words. What can you use to help you and what shouldn't you use? Just pause the video for a second and have a think. I hope you didn't spot it just for a second there. So you should use the story map. You should definitely use your story map. That's really going to help you to remember what goes in each paragraph. You should definitely use the table that you put together with Mrs Plews on Friday and all of that additional, that extra research that you added to it. But you shouldn't copy the original text. 
I'd like to put you to put it in your own words, please. I shouldn't be looking at exactly what we've already um, learned about. So we know that the non-chronological report will contain five paragraphs. What else will it contain that we haven't mentioned yet? Can you remember some of the features? Well, it will have a title, won't it? And it will have subtitles. It will be in paragraphs. It will include facts, technical language. It will be in the third person. Is there anything I've missed out? I think I've covered it all. Okay, and what, what's special about paragraph three and five? There's a bit of a clue here. They have text boxes in, don't they? So it would be really nice if you could include some text boxes in your non-chronological report today, please. Today and tomorrow. This lesson is actually going to take um, two lessons. So you'll be writing this today and you'll also get tomorrow's lesson to write it. Um, so as I just said, you've got two lessons to write this report, including the text boxes. So you can write it like the original, but you need to change bits. You need to add bits. You need to put it into your words. And it does have to have the same subtitles. So your subtitles are the invasion of Britain, towns, empire building and the army. But before we start, we're going to read through the original version again. What you think about which bits do you find tricky to remember because you're going to have to try and remember those bits when you're writing today. I'm going to read it out for you because it's quite hard to see. So our overall title is the Romans. It's been underlined and it's right in the middle at the top. The Romans were powerful and determined people. During the Roman reign, they achieved many things, including invading countries, including Britain, building towns, growing their empire and creating impressive armies. So that's a lovely introduction, which introduces all of the four different topic areas we're going to be talking about. And Mrs. Plews um, talked to you about how you write your introduction uh, in one of her lessons last week. Our first paragraph is the invasion of Britain, and it starts with an underlined subtitle. Rome was founded in 8th century BC and was named after the famous twins Romulus and Remus. But the Romans then invaded Britain in 43 AD. Immediately after they arrived in England, they started work building roads and forts so they could transport soldiers around the country. Paragraph two is about towns and it starts with an underlined subtitle or subheading. It is a well-known fact that the Romans built many towns around England. The largest one was London, which they called Londinium. Traditionally, Roman towns were all laid out in the same way. Each had straight streets shaped in a grid pattern with buildings like a bathhouse, temples, aqueducts and an amphitheatre. And then we've got a text box here, which has got a picture of how Roman towns were traditionally laid out. And it tells us that it had straight roads and streets and it included bathhouses, temples, aqueducts and amphitheatres. Our third paragraph is all about empire building. Uh, Britain was just a very small part of the Roman Empire. Have you ever wondered where else the Romans conquered? I like that rhetorical question. You might like to put one of those in your writing. They reigned all around the Mediterranean Sea, including parts of Africa. Eventually, the Roman Empire became too big to rule very well. And therefore, in 285 AD, the empire was split in two halves, east and west. Around the year 410 AD, the Romans had all left Britain because the soldiers were needed to defend other parts of the empire. Okay, our final section is called the army. Roman armies were very highly trained, well organised and excellent fighters. Interestingly, Roman soldiers had to be at least 20 years old when they joined the army and they had to stay in for 25 years. This seems like a long time. However, when they left, they were rewarded well with money or land that they could farm. Now we've got another text box here. It's got a picture of a Roman soldier with some labels for parts of his equipment. So let's have a look at what you need to achieve today. So you've already done your long day and your waltz. These are our steps to success. 
uh, I provided you with this table in your um, daily planning today. So you need to make sure that you include a title that covers the whole subject, a brief introduction, organised paragraphs, subheadings, fact boxes or bullet points, factual language and that you write in the third person in a formal tone. OK, when you're ready, you can start writing. Just make sure that it looks like a non-chronological report from the beginning. I've started mine over here, look. So let me get my writing tool. I've got my big title, which is The Romans. I've written it in the middle at the top and I've underlined it. Underlined it. I've then started with the Romans were a formidable group of people. They gained great power by. So that's the start of my introduction. I haven't finished it yet. I might work on that with you in a minute. And then my first subheading is the invasion of Britain. I wonder, shall we try and finish my introduction? I can move the other bits down out the way. Oopsie daisy. I think it might be easier to just write it on a new slide actually. So I'm going to take my introduction and I'm just going to type it into the next slide. Give myself a bit more room. So the Romans were a formidable group of people. They gained great power by, I'm going to say, oh, how did they get their power? It was by invading countries, wasn't it, and building their empire. They gained great power by invading many countries across Europe, Europe, and Africa and expanding their empire. Okay, so I've talked about empire building there, haven't I? Um, they had a very strong army uh, which became famous um, for its famous for its um, ability to win in battle. And our army was amazing, wasn't it? So I've talked about the army, I've talked about empire building. What are the other topics I need to talk about? Let me remind myself. Towns and invading Britain. Okay. The Romans were a formidable group of people. They gained great power by invading many countries across Europe and Africa including Britain and expanding their empire. Can I in brackets instead of commas? They had a very strong army which they became famous, which became famous for its ability to win in battle. The Romans um, built many towns which were organized in a distinctive way um, read on to find out more what do we think of that then the romans were formidable that means um are quite scary um like intimidating group of people you might want to use those words intimidating or formidable the romans were a formidable group of people they gained great power by invading many countries across Europe and Africa, including Britain, and expanding their empire. They had a very strong army, which became famous for its ability to win in battle. The Romans built many towns, which, oh, I, put, oh, I should have put were, which were organised in a distinctive way. Read on to find out more. So that's my introduction. Hopefully you can see it's not too similar to the original introduction, but it's got a lot of similarities. I've just put it in my own words. So the original one said the Romans were powerful and determined people. During the Roman reign, they achieved many things, including invading countries, including Britain, building towns, growing their empire and creating impressive armies. So it's different enough to be my own words. I'm happy with that. What I would do now is go on to write my first section. I hope you can see how that's going to work today. I will keep referring back to my facts to help me as I go today. So let's just have a look at the facts for the first section. 
Uh, we crossed out those first two, didn't we, with Mrs. Plews. The Romans invaded Britain in 43 AD. After arriving, they started work building roads and forts. So I might start my first paragraph on the invasion of Britain. There we are. Let's just write it here. The invasion of Britain by saying in 43 AD, Britain was invaded by the Romans. And then I'll go back and look at my next fact and use it to uh, add to my work. So what you need to do now is get started. You've got two lessons to write this and my video tomorrow will be a lot shorter than my video today. So today you need to get up to at least the end of the invasion of Britain. Ideally, you will have got up to the end of the town section today. That will leave you the second half to do tomorrow. But if you only get up to the invasion of Britain paragraph today, don't worry too much because like I said, my video tomorrow is much, much shorter. So you'll have a little bit more time then. When you've finished your work today, year four, you need to have a look at your steps to success and you need to tick the ones that you think you've done and put a dot next to the ones that you haven't done yet. Those ones will be the ones you need to focus on tomorrow. Okay, good luck with your writing. Please send it through so we can see how you've got on and we will, I will see you soon. Bye.